What's up, y'all? You're watching Union Minded. I'm your host, Eric, and today I want to talk to you about Memorial Day, the holiday. Um, I also want to recap, you know, my weekend for you guys and let you know how it went for uh, your boy, Eric. Um, you know, this weekend we had the second EWMC wall wash. We washed the Korean War Memorial um, this weekend. We did that on Saturday, and it was a powerful thing because here you are celebrating Memorial Day, which is a holiday meant to celebrate uh, the soldiers who gave their lives fighting for this country. And for me, I expand that. Um, I like to commemorate the soldiers who died for justice and freedom throughout this country's history because the war for me has always been a war of justice um, and so it's been an ongoing thing whether you're talking about labor or you're talking about soldiers in the military um, <clears throat> so we did that and that was humbling and it was impactful and it, it kind of made my whole view of, of the weekend kind of shift a little bit for this weekend uh, then we had a little bit of a barbecue with the family and that was really nice we made some pinchos with chicken and uh, some veggies on it, really lovely. Uh, I had the family over, that was nice. Then we went and watched The Little Mermaid. Wonderful movie, you should watch it. It's amazing. Um, the diversity in the cast, uh, Halle Bailey's voice, oh my, the, way, the emotions she was emoting on these songs. Lin Manuel Miranda wrote a rap called Scuttlebutt, which was awesome. Uh, the whole movie was good. Um, so then, so that caps off the weekend. It was a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Um, and then Memorial Day, you know, kind of spent it quiet, you know, kind of quiet. But, um, I wanted to talk to you guys about the history of Memorial Day because many people don't know how we come to celebrate Memorial Day. Um, why do we do it? Where did it start? How did it all begin? You know what I mean? And that's what I want to dive into. <clears throat> I'll put the uh, article in the description box for you. This is an article on the uh, history.com website. Um, and this is one of the, oh, this is by Dave Ruse. And it was updated May 16th, 2023. All right, now here we go. One of the earliest Memorial Day ceremonies was held by freed African-Americans. At the close of the Civil War, people recently freed from slavery in Charleston honored fallen Union soldiers. The fight for justice. That's what Memorial Day is all about for me. Memorial Day was born out of necessity. After the American Civil War, a battered United States was faced with the task of burying and honoring the 600 to 800,000 Union and Confederate soldiers who had died in the single bloodiest military conflict in American history. The first national commemoration of Memorial Day was held in Arlington National Cemetery on May 30th, 1868, where both Union and Confederate soldiers are buried. Several towns and cities across America claim to have observed their own earlier versions of Memorial Day or Decoration Day as early as 1866. The earlier name is derived from the fact that decorating graves was and remains a central activity of Memorial Day. But it wasn't until a remarkable discovery in a dusty Harvard University archive in the late 1990s that historians learned about a Memorial Day commemoration organized by a group of black people freed from enslavement less than a month after the Confederacy surrendered in 1865. The First Decoration Day Back in 1996, David Blight, a professor of American history at Yale University, was researching a book on the Civil War when he had one of those once-in-a-career eureka moments. A curator at Harvard's Houghton Library asked if he wanted to look through two boxes of unsorted material from Union veterans. There was a file labeled First Decoration Day, remembers Blight, still amazed at his good fortune. And inside, on a piece of cardboard, was a narrative handwritten by an old veteran, plus a date referencing an article in the New York Tribune. That narrative told the essence of the story that I ended up telling in my book of this march on the racetrack in 1865. 
The racetrack in question was the Washington Race Course and Jockey Club in Charleston, South Carolina. In the late stages of the Civil War, the Confederate Army transformed the formerly posh country club into a makeshift prison for Union captives. More than 260 Union soldiers died from disease and exposure while being held in the racetrack's open-air infield. Their bodies were hastily buried in a mass grave behind the grandstands. When Charleston fell and Confederate troops evacuated the badly damaged city, those freed from enslavement remained. One of the first things those emancipated men and women did was to give the fallen Union prisoners a proper burial. They exhumed the mass grave and reinterred the bodies in a new cemetery with a tall, whitewashed fence inscribed with the words, Martyrs of the Race Course. And then on May 1st, 1865, something even more extraordinary happened. According to two reports that Blight found in the New York Tribune and the Charleston Courier, a crowd of 10,000 people, mostly freed slaves with some white missionaries, staged a parade around the racetrack. 3,000 black school children carried bouquets of flowers and sang John Brown's body. Members of the famed 54th Massachusetts and other black Union regiments were in attendance and performed double-time marches. Black ministers recited verses from the Bible. If the news reports are accurate, the 1865 gathering at the Charleston racetrack would be the earliest Memorial Day commemoration on record. Blight excitedly called the Avery Institute of Afro-American History and Culture at the College of Charleston looking for more information on the historic event. I've never heard of it, they told me, says Blight. This never happened. But it was clear from the newspaper reports that a Memorial Day observance was organized by freed slaves in Charleston at least a year before other U.S. cities and three years before the first national observance. How had this been lost to history for over a century? This was a story that had really been suppressed both in the local memory and certainly the national memory, says Blight. But nobody who had witnessed it could ever have forgotten it. Blight kept digging for more information. But the only other mention he found of the racetrack event was in, 1960, in a 1916 correspondence sent from a woman's Civil War Historical Society in New Orleans to its sister chapter in Charleston, asking about a big parade of freed slaves on a horse track at the end of the war. I regret that I was unable to gather any official information in answer to this, wrote the Charleston Society's president. That's such a telling statement, says Blight. The woman who wrote that letter may not have known about it, but the fact that she didn't tell that she didn't tells the story. A forgotten ceremony. Once the war was over and Charleston was rebuilt in the 1880s, the city's white residents likely had little interest in remembering an event held by former enslaved people to celebrate the Union's dead. That didn't fit their version of what the war was all about, says Blight. In time, the old horse track and country club were torn down, and thanks to a gift from a wealthy northern patron, the Union's soldiers' graves were moved from the humble white fenced graveyard in Charleston to the Beaufort Natural National Cemetery. By the time Blight was rummaging through the Harvard archives in 1996, the story of the first Memorial Day had been entirely forgotten. Or perhaps not entirely. After his book, Race and Reunion, was published in 2001, Blight gave a talk about Memorial Day at the Smithsonian National Museum of American History. And after it was finished, an older black woman approached him. You mean that story is true? The woman asked Blight. I grew up in Charleston and my granddaddy used to tell us the story of a parade at the old racetrack and we never knew whether to believe him or not. You mean that's true? For Blight, it's less important whether the 1865 commemoration of the martyrs of the race course is officially recognized as the first Memorial Day. It's the fact that this occurred in Charleston at a cemetery site for the Union dead in a city where the Civil War had begun, says Blight. And that it was organized and done by African American former slaves is what gives it such poignancy. And I agree wholeheartedly. And I didn't learn that in school. I went to public school in Miami, Florida. I didn't learn that in public school in, in Miami, Florida. Now, granted, it wasn't discovered until, you know, very late in life. But it happened so long ago. How could we have forgotten it if it wasn't intentional? And that's why I never learned it in school. And that's why you probably never learned it in school either. Be mindful of what you learn and read. Reading is important. It's, it's important to learn. Anyway, my name is Eric. You're watching Union Minded. Remember, the fight's not left and right. It's up and down. It's going to take solidarity to win always. Each one, teach one. Get out there and reach one. And there could be no union without you and I. Front and center.
Peace.